this party started. We're gonna get this party started. Come on, man, I know you can do better than that. We're out in a football game, we were shouting and jumping. Come on, we did the hardest part already, which was to get here. Now that we're here, come on in, man. Come on in, man, come on in. Come on, take some time to really let it all out right now. Just take some time to let it all out. Come on, see, shout to his name. Shout to the, the, your savior, your healer, your provider. Come on, your protector. He that's restoring your marriage right now. He that's restoring your kids, their mind, their hearts. Come on, come on. Shout it out, shout it out, man. Hallelujah. Come on, he's been waiting for this moment. He's been waiting for this moment. He has just sat down right now to hear your worship and your praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Man, I just want to invite you to come on closer. Come on in. There's, there's a lot of room that we have right here. Just uh, as we get closer to each other, the fire just ignites a little bit more, a little bit brighter, a little bit stronger. There's something about when men sit by each other. That the spirit of Moo just moves on, on behalf. Amen. Just want to welcome you, man, to uh, turning, turning Point Fellowship, to Men of a Higher Standard Meeting, Men of a Higher Standard Breakfast. <laughs> Hallelujah. How beautiful it is to gather with the man. I, I tell you, they be trying to get me to work every sat Saturdays at work. And I said, nope. I already have it in my calendar. I said, every first. Is I could do whatever every other, other time you want. But every first Saturday, it's a no. Amen. For this, this is what this is what we need. How many of y'all need this? How many of y'all need this? This is this to it's mandatory to to me. To me. Just the way it is for me to go to work. You know what? I need to be around amongst my brothers. Amen. Hallelujah. So on behalf of Pastor Angel, like I said, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um you know, yeah, I can't come up here without uh, sharing something. I tell you that God is always doing something. And um, um, not a, few, a few months back, I was, uh, I was promoted. I got, a new, I got a new position at my job. You know, I was no longer the painter. I was no longer working in the, working in the warehouse. They, said, they put me in the office. Ever since I was 16, I've never, I've, I've worked with my hands. You know, I didn't know what working in the office was. It was a, it was a, it was a little different, a little hard for, my, for me. And uncomfortable because I was used to, I can't be still. I don't know if you guys knew that, but I can't be still. So they put me in the office and they said, you know what, we're going to pay you salary. It's going to be, you know, you're going to be able to take so many days off. You know, you'll get paid for it. And it all sounded really, really good, really good. So, you know what, I started living a life like I was, I had that money. I started, I started buying stuff and treating myself. My wife took me on vacation on my birthday. Like I said, my wife took me on vacation on my birthday. I said, yeah, it's okay, cool. I got that now, cool. I work hard to get where I'm at. I never look at my check stuff, never look at, I just go and here you go, mama. Because my, my wife takes care of, you know, spreading that out. And um, then I, one day I just happened to look at, and I'm like, and I started doing the math. I started doing the math and I'm like, wait a minute. I realized that I was getting paid $5 less than I was making when I was getting paid hourly. And if you make the math, that's $200 a week. That's $800 a month. But yet, you know, as a man... It crushed me. It made me feel uncomfortable. It made me feel like I wasn't appreciated. You know, and I said, and I do, I did what I do best. I took it on to my father. You know, and I was a little broken. I was a little bothered. And, I, you know, I sat there and I was just like, man, but I, you know, when I do the things that I do, I do them and I, I do them, I'm all in with them. I do them with everything I got. You know, and I sat there and I was praying to my father. And my father goes, hey, wait a minute. He goes, they didn't promote you. I promoted you where you're at. You know, and I started to think, and like I shared with you earlier, I didn't say what I was saying just because it's, I started living a life because the Lord had blessed me. The Lord is blessing me. And I tell you that even though I was missing the, those five extra dollars, or those, the Lord still kept me. 
the Lord provided. And I tell you that nothing was lacking at home. Nothing was lacking. When sickness came to the house, it was gone the same moment it came in. Financially, let me tell you, the Lord took care of it. And the Lord reminded me, he said, if I took care of the bird, take care of the birds, what makes you think I'm not going to take care of you? I said, look, he said, keep your eyes on me. Let me take care of the rest. Keep your eyes on me. Don't be moved what's happening over here. Keep your eyes on me and let me make a way where, where there is no way. And the Lord has taken care of that. I just wanted to give glory to God because of that. Because God's taking care of that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We're going to open up on uh, Psalm 65. Psalm 65 so we can get this party started for it is a party. Shout with joy to God, all the earth. Shout with joy, all to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praises glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. Look around you. Look around you. This is what God is doing right now. This is what God is doing right now. This is what God is doing right now. He's working within us right now. He's, wor he's working in my heart right now. He's working in my family right now. He's working for my primos that people never thought they were going to change. God is working in right now. People thought that this man was never going to change. But let me tell you, the power of God. The power of prayer, the power of the blood is what changed me. Amen. Come and see what God has done. How awesome his works in man's behalf. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. Verse 8. Praise our God, all people. Let the sounds of his praise be heard. He has presented our lives and kept our feet from slipping. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray. We're going to get our worship started. Um, I just want to invite you, man, as we get ready to worship, just enter in. You know, the moment you stepped in, the Lord was already waiting to embrace you. The moment you stepped in, he, was all, he, he has been waiting for you. You know, there's a lot of heaviness for throughout our, our week of labor at home. I'm married. I got kids. I got a dog. You know, there's a lot that goes on. So he just wants to embrace you and take all of that from you. Just wants to love on you. And, but you, the thing is, such, he's such a, he's so respectful that he, he's waiting for you to just surrender it all to him today. Amen. Father, we just thank you, Father, for today. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity that we have to be here, Father, to worship you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that as we stepped in, Father, we, we felt your embrace, Father. We felt, uh, Father, your love, Father. And as we come into your place of worship, Father, we, we just want to surrender it all today right now, Father. We pray, Father, that as we come in, Father, you, you begin to minister to our hearts, Father. That you begin to remove those things, Father, that we've been carrying throughout the week, Father. Even throughout time, Father, those things that uh, don't glorify you, Father. We just want to give them to you today, Father. We pray, Father, that as we come in, Father, we come expecting, Father, expecting to be changed, Father, expecting to be uh, transformed, Father, expecting to receive a word from you, Father, Lord, expecting to hear the sweetness of your voice, Father. We thank you, Father, for those that are coming right now, Father, I pray that they get here safely, Lord. And, Father, those that are not here, Father, I pray that you keep them and guard them wherever they're at, Father. And as we, as we enter into this worship, Father, that you just... Move in your people, Father. As your men cry out for you, Father, that, that you fill them, Father. An overflow, Father, today, Father. An overflow, so much of it, Father, that it will fall into their families as they head on home, Father. That as they go home, Father, their, their, their kids, Father, their wives, Father, will not recognize it. They will know that, that something happened today. That something happened at their man's meeting, Father. We give you honor and glory, Father. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. Man, as we, as we get ready, man, I want you to enter in, man. Start entering in, man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Wow. 
I see some mighty men here. I don't know what you see when you look in the mirror. I see some mighty men. You know, and I, I, I was, I, I had something to say, you know, but I was like, man, I know I'm supposed to just worship here and, and uh, I don't want to preach, so brother did it for me. <laughs> that was good, man. And uh, wow, I, I love the way you guys worship, uh, praise God. Now I know everybody isn't from this house, but uh, uh, you know, I was thinking, you know, I mean, we wear so many hats. I mean, we got sons, grandsons, grandfathers, fathers in this house. We got uh, uh, employees, employers. I don't know if anybody here is in the political arena. We got people in, in education. So many hats we got to wear. And, and yet God wants us to be um, ministers of the gospel, preachers, uh, teachers. Uh, he wants us to be disciples. And so how do we do all that? And then look at today. This is a crazy day. You know, people are worried about uh, what, the, what's, what they're going to do, how they're going to pay their gas. Some people, uh, you know, have to choose whether they pay their gas or, you know, uh, what they buy for food. And, and yet we have the mind of Christ, you know, and, and we know that God provides. He's, he's, he's Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides. And so, you know, uh, we're prophetic people, and how do we do all that? How do we how do we do all that? It's impossible <laughs> with men, but we're not mere men. We're not mere men. We are sons of the Most High God. You know, and like and like Ray, I'm a chaplain, and and uh, uh, you know, I'll go into the jails and do, and do that, and 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 just be. A minister wherever I am, but uh, uh, and see God move mightily. But if we don't know who we are, if we don't look in the mirror and say, "You are, you you are what God said you are today," it doesn't matter what it looks like, you know, and it doesn't matter what I see. We walk by faith, not by sight, and we know that we win. So we know that anything that happens. You know, any hard time or any trial is going to end. But his kingdom will never end. And so we, are, we, we walk with knowledge. You know, and, and in Psalms it says that to praise him according to understanding. And so when we praise, we don't just, you know, say, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, praise you, praise you. We know what we're doing. We praise him because he is God. And no matter what happens, he wins, we win. And our children win. We don't have to, we don't have to uh, 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 be up with our stomach turning and knots every night trying to figure out what we're going to do because we know that God's going to provide. And so, you know, I like to think about uh, uh, how many of you guys have watched Braveheart? How many of you guys have seen Braveheart? Okay. So, not, so you guys, uh -oh. sorry guys. I thought I had it on, uh, on uh, do not disturb. Uh, one second. Uh, well, on Braveheart, there's two scenes. Well, there's a few scenes that I really love. And one of them is when, when he goes out there and he, and he, you know, in their first battle. You know, you got all the men together. And, and, he, and they say, what are you going to go do? He says, I'm going to pick a fight. You know? And then... And then when he, gets, when he gets back, you know, he insults the, the, the other team and stuff. That's not, you know, that's not what we do. But what, when he gets back, before they fight, um, one thing before that, God gave him a strategy, what to do. Remember with the thing with the spears and stuff? These guys are coming in Calvary and horses. And, and, and the other guy saying, there's never been a time where, you know, a footman army uh, won against, you know, they had hundreds of, of, you know. So they had these hundreds of spears, but they had them hidden. You know, and so God gave them, I mean, he, he, he had a strategy. And be, but before they started, you know, they started, what would they, what'd he do? Ah! See, and for us, the Bible says, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Shout unto God. You know, when we, when we release any sound, any sound that brings honor to him, God shows up. 
period. That's the rule. He shows up. And so when we release, clap your hands, oh you people, shout unto God, Dan, all these things that we do, uh, praise him on the cymbal, praise him on the, on the drum, uh, praise him with a loud voice, praise him on the stringed instrument, all, all these things release sound. You know, uh, the guitar, there's, there's, a, there's vibration of air that goes through here. Your vocal cords, there's, when, when, you, when you talk and when you shout, when you sing, there's a, a, a vibration of, of air that goes through. It says, let everything that has breath, everything that has air, praise the Lord. And so I want you guys, again, before we start, here's the thing. They went into battle. They sh and, and when he shouted, everybody fought. They all shouted, you know, they, and it pumped them up, you know. What happens in these games where they have, you know, really good uh, representation of, of fans or fanatics, you know, uh, shouting and screaming, you know, it really put, it gives them an edge, you know. But for us it's different. We don't have an edge. We, ha we win, period. It doesn't matter what it looks like. We win. And, and so they shouted, they all shouted. They won the battle, okay. But after, uh, when, when he's standing there looking at all the dead bodies, he was full, you know, Mel Gibbs, he's full of blood himself, Wallace. And, and, he, and he stood there tired. You could see, I mean, just dead bodies everywhere. But they won. And what did he do? <laughs> he lifted up his sword and he's, ah! And then all of them beat down soldiers, man, got up and shouted. So listen, right now, I know there's not mighty, many mighty here, many noble, maybe there are some in disguise, I don't know, but uh, the polished uh, worship leader and polished musician couldn't show up, so you got me. And, but we are worshipers, and God is looking for worshipers. See, he needs warriors, but he doesn't look for warriors. He looks for worshipers and makes warriors. He needs fathers. He doesn't look for fathers. He looks for worshipers and makes, and, and, and makes fathers. And every, in every area of your life, whatever it is, if you're not a worshiper, you're never going to make. I mean, you, may, you might be a good man. You might be a good dad. You might be a good, but you're not going to fulfill the potential that God has for you without being a worshiper, without knowing God, because he's the only one that has the answers you need. And so as we come, God is looking for worshipers to make disciples out of this crew here. To make disciples so you can make disciples. And how are you going to do that? You're going to hear God's voice and recognize that the God of the universe is talking to you. You. Lord, what? What am I? What is man that thou art mindful of me? But that's who our God is. He loves us. See, we're his little boys, yet we're his mighty warriors. That's like, that doesn't really seem to go in the same, you know, water and oil, but it's true. We can be God's little boy, tenderhearted, uh, walk as dear, ch dear children, and yet still be a worshiper. We still be a uh, uh, what he's called us to be. So on the count of three, you guys already got this, but I, I want to hear it. On the count of three, let's shout unto God with a voice of triumph, knowing with understanding our praise, we win. This thing that's going on with, with America, America shall be saved. This thing that's going on in our schools, you know what? You do your job. We do our job and pray and believe God and intercede. It's going to change. It's changing even now. All these mandates that they're trying to, I don't know how many of you guys know that uh, they had a vote this last uh, two weeks ago that failed. Uh, it went under the screen where they wanted to give up uh, uh, America's uh, sovereignty to the World uh, Health Organization. And check this out. The guy, the guy who is the enforcer for that, that means that if there's a problem, if they see in California like, okay, uh, oh, there's a couple cases of COVID, shut California down. And if you don't comply, they have the right to come in because we've submitted to their authority. This is what this administration tried to do. And there was a, a, a remnant that we're praying. And, you know, it did fail. But they're going to bring it up again. They, this is what they want to do. Well, they can't have America. They can't have America. They can't have America. 
So let's, what, on the count of three, let's shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Knowing we win. Devil can't stop what God's will. He cannot stop what he's willed for this nation, for you, for your family, for your children, for your children's children, for your friends, your nephews, your uncles. He's not going to stop it. He can't. We win. So, all right? One, two, three. Thank you, God. The enemy's been defeated. Death couldn't hold you down. I said the enemy has been defeated. Death couldn't hold you down. Oh, the enemy has been defeated. But death couldn't hold you down. We're going to raise our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. The enemy has been defeated. Come on. Death couldn't hold you down. We're going to raise our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. The enemy has been defeated. Death couldn't hold you down. We're going to raise our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, oh, we lift you higher, we lift you higher, Jesus, come on, sing it, Jesus, Jesus, we lift you higher, we lift you higher, the enemy had been defeated, death couldn't hold you down. We're going to raise our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. The enemy has been defeated. But death couldn't hold you down. We're going to raise our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. Oh, the enemy has been defeated. But death couldn't hold you down. We're gonna raise our voice in victory. We're gonna make your praises loud. Come on! Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Jesus. 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 Oh, we lift you higher. We lift you higher. Jesus. 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 We lift you higher, higher and higher. The enemy has been defeated. The death couldn't hold you down. We're going to raise our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. The enemy has been defeated. The death couldn't hold you down. We're going to raise our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We lift your name.
name up, we lift your name up. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Jesus. 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 Oh, we lift you high, higher and higher. Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh, we lift you higher and higher. There's no other name under heaven and earth whereby men can be saved. There is no other name under heaven and earth whereby men they can be saved. Oh, there is no other name under heaven and earth whereby men they can be saved. There is no other name under heaven and earth whereby men they can be saved. Come on, sing. Jesus. Jesus, oh, we lift you higher, we lift you higher, Jesus, 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 we lift you higher, higher and higher, hallelujah. Are the, are the words up there? Are the words up there for you to see? No? You didn't get the words up? Oh, can you guys see the words? Oh, I thought you were uh, putting the words on the... So this song is real simple since the words aren't up there. It says, Jesus. Say it. Jesus, I love you. Holy Spirit, I need you. Abba Father, I adore you with all of my heart. Oh, Jesus, I love you, Holy Spirit, I need you, Abba Father, I adore you with all of my heart. Come on, sing it. Oh, Jesus, I love you, Holy Spirit, I need you, Abba Father, I adore you with all of my heart. One more time. Jesus, I love you, Holy Spirit. I need you, Abba Father, I adore you with all of my heart. Cause I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you with all of my heart. Said I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you. All of my heart, and I will go. I'll go where you want me to go. Come on, I'll do. I'll do what you want me to do, and I'll be what you want me to be for the rest of my life. Said I love you. 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 Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you with all of my heart. And I will go, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. And I'll be what you want me to be for the rest of my life. Said I will go, I'll go where you want me to go. And I'll do what you want me to do. And I'll be what you want me to be for the rest of my life. Said I will go, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do, I'll do what you want me to 
do And I'll be, I'll be what you want me to be For the rest of my life Cause I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you And I love you, I love you, I love you Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you With all of my heart Say that I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you With all of my heart Jesus, I love you, Holy Spirit I need you ever farther I adore you with all of my heart Lord Jesus, I love you, Holy Spirit. I need you ever farther. I adore you with all of my heart. Cause I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you with all of my heart. Yes, I love you, I love you, I love you. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. With all of my Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one Lord, our hearts adore. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one. Where 
else can we go? Where else can we go but to you? Where else can we go? Where else can we go but to you? You're the healer of shattered minds. You're the mender of broken hearts. You're the restorer of shattered lies. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. Hallelujah. Just where you're at. Just stay right there where you're at. Just just meditate how good he is to you. How much he's loved you. How much he's been there for you. Let him embrace you. Let him embrace you. How good have you been, God? How great have you been, Father? And you love me like no other. And you believe in me like no other, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for changing my life. Transforming our lives, Father. We thank you, Lord. For the work that you're doing within us right now, Father. Lord, we thank you, Father. Glory be to you, Father, for you have been so good, so good, Father. There is no one like you. We love you, Abba. And we thank you for this beautiful day you've given us to worship you. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated, man. All right, man, the moment you all been waiting for, without further waiting, we're going to introduce a family member of ours right here. He's family. He is family. Yeah. Chaplain Ray Ochoa. Come on, man, we can do better than that. You're about to hear the word of God, the word of God, what you've been waiting for today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We praise you, Father. What a tremendous meeting already we have had. Hallelujah. The presence of the Spirit of God. Father, we love you, Father. We adore you. We love you, Jesus, Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence right now. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing of God upon every one of us, Father. I thank you, Lord, our hearts are open to receive and I thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping me share the word of God today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Praise God. I'm going to... This is my... No, I'm good. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. You know, I, I have some notes. You guys could be seated right there. Uh, I, get, I, I printed out some notes there. And... Uh, I numbered them just in case I, I start jumping around. You could follow me. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. You know, uh, the opening, everything that, uh, you know, Pastor uh, Chaplain Gilbert has said and Brother Fernando about worshiping. Uh, you know, I, I, I was going to share that verse too, uh, Psalms 47, verse 1. 
to clap your hands, all you people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. And you know, he mentioned the movie Dream, uh, uh, what is it, Braveheart. My favorite part is when the, yeah, you know, every time I see that, I picture men of God shouting like that unto God. When I see that movie, I picture it, I can see it. You know, I envision it and I see it today, hallelujah. It was so good. It was so good to see it, man. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I have a favorite scripture. To, uh, one of them is Psalms 122, verse 1. And it says, David says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And, uh, you know, I believe that's your heart attitude. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord today. I'm glad every time I go into the house of the Lord. No matter what day it is. Amen. We're glad to be in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And, uh, you know, I'm going to read to you just... Uh, uh, Psalms 133, beginning in verse 1. It's only three verses. From the Amplified, it says this. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Hallelujah. In unity. Hallelujah. And you know what? And that's one thing I know Pastor uh, Angel is blessed because he has a group of men that walk in unity with him. You know? And I, I love that. You know, I see it all the time when I come here. And it goes like this. It says, it is like, it is like the precious ointment poured on the head that ran down the, on the beard, even the beard of Aaron, the first high priest, that came down upon the collar of his, and shirt of his garment, consecrating the whole body. Verse 3, it is like the dew of the uh, Mount Hermon, and the dew that comes down on the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessings, even life evermore, forevermore upon the high and the lowly. Okay, there he demands blessings. Where is that at? In the unity. Amen. When we come together in unity and, 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 uh, and, and worship God and follow God's plan for our lives, you know, as we learned it for our families, we learned it for the church, you know, at work, all that. You know, God is involved in every part of our, our, our lives there. And I just want to praise God. I, I, I entitled this uh, Moving On, okay? We have to move on with God, amen? amen. And, you know, the, I'm going to, at the end of the service, I'm going to play a song. It's called Moving On. And one of the things it says, since I met Jesus, there is no stopping me. And, and that song, to me, is so powerful because... It's a declaration. I sing it. You know, I play, play it in my car and in the house. And, and, and I said, I could be driving, so I'm moving on. And, and since I met Jesus, there's no stopping me. I'm moving on. You know, it's part of my declaration. And that's all of us meet, need to be declarating, the, you know, that, that voice of your, your, uh, that I'm moving on with God. There's no stopping me. Right. Amen? Praise the Lord. And number one here, I said, follow your dreams. The best part of your life is still uh, in front of you. Amen? The best part of our life, I don't care how old you are. I'm 70 years old, and the best part of my life is still ahead. I'm not just talking about heaven, but I'm talking about doing Bible studies, you know, sharing the word, having uh, contact with people, sharing the word. You know, uh, we, at my church, there's a lot of old people. I said, you know what? Uh, we need to, uh, to, uh, to reach out. To people, he said, well, we, we're too old to go door to door and do things that, you know, all that. And I said, well, listen, when you touch somebody, Amen. that's just touching them. Speaking a good word is evangelism. You know, it's just talking to them. That's how we need to do As if you're that old. <laughs> you know, and uh, praise the Lord. I see the old brother over there laughing. <laughs> praise the Lord. But you know what? I, I want to tell you, dream big, okay? Dream big, dream big, and, 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 and praying bold prayers. Amen. Praying bold prayers. You know, you dream big, and then you start, Father, I declare this in the name of Jesus, and you start speaking it out of your mouth, declare it. Whatever that dream is, you know, it might be for your household. It might be for your job. It might be for yourself, for, you know, uh, ministry, but, you know, whatever in your household, you know, that's a big thing for your, your, your uh, wife and your, uh, 
your children and yourself, you declare it. And if you're single, declare, hey, I'm a man of God and uh, I'm moving on. And, you know, if God has uh, someone else for me, well, praise the Lord. If not, I praise the Lord anyways. Hallelujah. Amen. There's one scripture I, 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 I attached to when I was a baby Christian because I just got saved. And I was on my balcony of my apartment looking out, and I seen this couple walking out on a Friday night all dressed up. And I knew they were going, you know, they were going to go dance and party. And, I, and this is brought deliverance to me. I said, Father, I thank you that uh, you delivered me from that lifestyle, Father. And I made this declaration. And I'm never alone because you're always with me. I'm never alone. And then later on I read in... Uh, in John chapter 16, verse 32, it says, you know, his disciples left Jesus, but he says, I'm never alone because the Father is always with me. Amen. Jesus made that statement. And when I seen that, I said, amen. But that brought a, uh, that brought a victory in my life because I didn't feel lonely. I might be alone, but I, I don't feel lonely, you know, in, in, uh, in, the, you know, in that sense because I know God is with me all the time. And that get, brought me victory on that particular day. So dream big, praying bold prayers. I'll, get, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit. But right here it says, I'm going to go to Acts chapter 2. Uh, beginning reading here in verse 12. Okay, we know the coming of the Holy Spirit. He came. Okay, I'm not going to read all that. He fell on the people, you know, and, and they all spoke with tongues. Amen. And if you, if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence speaking in the tongue, it's available, you know. And, and it's, it's, I think every believer should uh, receive it because there's power behind it. There's, there, it's more than just speaking in tongues in, in a language. It's communicating with the Holy Spirit and him communicating with you and with God. You know, so, that's a, so if you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit, just ask God. And, you know, you can ask, we could pray for you today if you want to, or you could talk to Pastor Angel. But anyhow, and then, you know, we, uh, we have the, the crowd's response. You know, they responded to what they heard when they were speaking in tongues. And picking it up in verse 12, it says this. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mocking said, they are full of, of new wine. But Peter, standing up with, an, with the eleven, raised his voice and said to the men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let, let this be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. You know, and that means that they're going to be declaring the word of God. Amen. They're going to be speak boldly the, the word of God. You know, and it says, uh, your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. So, you know, uh, I, uh, God shows us visions. He gives us dreams of the future. You know, <laughs> one day um, before I met Jesus, I was all messed up in my head, and I didn't care if I lived or died. You know, that's where I was at. I was, you know, all messed up, drug addiction, all that. And I had a, do uh, you ever daydream? You guys ever daydream? You just stare at the wall, and you, you could see ahead and all that? Well, I was staring at the wall, and my future came to me. It was prison. It was an overdose on heroin. It was going to prison. It was, it was uh, uh, getting into a gunplay situation because of drugs. I knew that was my future. Then I looked this way, and my past shot through my head in one second. I knew I was going to get a divorce. I, I, uh, I was all messed up because I was a failure because of drugs. And I, I broke my back behind drugs. You know, I, as a, I was 17 years old when I broke my back. And, and I came out of that thought. I said, I don't care if I live or die. That was my words. And as soon as I spoke the words, my brother stuck his head in the door at the same time. 
and he just told me, brother, you look terrible. He's seen a dead man. I was dead inside. And he just got born again two months before that. And he would come and see me once a week. I said, but I don't want to hear it. Get off my back. You know. And then that day, I don't know, I don't remember talking too much, but I, I must have said yes, because the next day I went to church with him, loaded, sat in the back, and the, word of, the truth of the word of God changed my life. So, you know, just keep on coming. God will take care of his, you. <coughs> but the point is, what I wanted to show here is that he gives us dreams and visions. Okay? He gives us dreams and visions. Vision yourself getting promoted at your job. Vision yourself getting a, a new home. Vision yourself getting an apartment. A, a, a used car, a new car, whatever. You know, have a, a, a vision, a dream in your heart for your future. And, and, and I'm talking about have a vision for next week, for next month, for next year, five years from now. But, you know, it's short visions. That way you know where you're moving forward, you're moving on. You can have a, a long-term vision. That's good, too. But look at the short ones, you know, and you see progress happening. And so... Uh, and I just wanted to share that dreams and visions God gives us by the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and also I, want, I have in your notes there, it says dreams do change. David, King David and his son Solomon. David had a dream of building the, the temple, but it went to his son. Amen? So, you know, you might have a dream for a business and all that and or, or whatever it may be, but your son is going to pick it up, or your daughter is going to pick it up. Somebody else is going to pick it up, you know, because it's time. You, you, we get old, and it's just, or it's not you that's supposed to do it. But God, God uh, uh, changes dreams for the better. And point three right here, I want to read. I want to go to Samuel, First Samuel. Chapter 9 and chapter 10 right here. Saul anointed king, okay? Saul is anointed king here. And all I can say is that, you know what? We are children of the king. You know, it says that he is king of kings. He is lord of lords. So, you know, that's who we are in Christ. We are God's anointed, amen? Amen. And you need to know that so you could be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And, and, and right here in verse 27 of uh, chapter 9, it says this. As they were going down to the outskirts of the city, Samuel said to Saul, tell the servants to go ahead of us. And he went on. But well, you stand here a while that I may announce to you the word of God. Okay. <laughs> And all of us need to stand still. And that's why we come to church, to stand still, stand still and listen and get understanding and knowledge of the word of God. Because on your own, oh, I don't need to go to church. Yeah, you do. Amen. Because this is where you're going to hear truth and understand it to apply it for your life. So, you know, he, he announces to him uh, to stand still. Amen. And, while, and then I'm going to go into uh, chapter 10 here. And I'm just going to read uh, verses 1, then I'm going to jump to verse 5. It says, Then Samuel took a flask of oil, poured it on his head, and kissed him, and said, It is not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his inheritance. It, it's not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his inheritance. And you know what? He has anointed us, okay, over your household. You know, even over, over in your department where you might be ahead of in your job, you're anointed for that position, you know, and, and walk it as a believer and walk in that anointing. It goes on to say in verse uh, 5 here. Okay. It says, After that you have come to the hill uh, where the Philistine garrison is, and it shall happen when you have come there to the city, that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with the string instruments and the tambourine and flute and the harp before them, and they will be prophesying. So they're gonna, he's going to run into uh, uh, prophets from the school of, uh, of prophets, 
and they're going to be prophesying, speaking the word of God, and he, he's going to run into them. You know, that's what Saul's, and if you read before that, uh, Saul tells them this is going to happen. In verse 6, it says this, then the, then the spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. Isn't that what has happened to us? Every one of us are not the same anymore since we walked through heaven's door. Okay? We're not the same anymore since we walked through heaven's door. Praise the Lord. And verse 7 says, And let it be when these signs come to you that you do as the occasion demands. Do as the occasion demands, for God is with you. And we need, we need to be heat that, you know, you might be in a place and God prompts you to do something, do it. You know, but... I, I know that a lot of times as a young Christian, or you've never done it before, uh, or you hesitate, but you know what? Step out in faith and do it. You know, uh, if, if you have uh, fear, do it in fear. Just step up forward and do it, and you'll see God show up. God will show up, you know, so don't be uh, fearful, you know. And it says that in, in 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10 that we are a chosen generation, a royal piece of uh, 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 holy nation, a peculiar people that show forth the, the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. So we're supposed to be declaring that, declaring that, uh, that we are that chosen generation. And we all are, man. You are a chosen generation and you lead your family, my brother, whoever they may be. You know, your brothers, your sisters. My brother got me into the kingdom of God. You know, he, he bugged me to life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm going to go to the next line here. It says, declaring the end from the beginning. Declaring the end from the beginning. Like I said, we all have uh, daydreams and uh, dreams at night. I'm going to go to uh, Isaiah 46 here. <coughs> okay. <coughs> It says this in verse 9, 46, uh, beginning in verse 9. Remember, remember the former things of old. Let me read it from the Amplified. Earnestly remember the former things which I did of old. For I am God, and there is no one else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the and the results from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things uh, that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasures and purposes. It goes on, verse 11 here, it goes, says this. Calling a, ra a ravious, ravenous bird from the east, the man Cyrus, who executes my counsel and from a far country, yes, I have spoken, and I will bring it to pass, and I have purposed it, and I will do it. So right here, God is saying, I called Cyrus. And in, in verse 45, verse 1, it says this, Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus. So God, Cyrus was God anointed for that time, and he was a non-believer, but God chose him, amen? He had a purpose for him. And in, uh, right here, I, I see the... It says, calling the bird of prey from the east. You know, every one of us is called. Pastor Angel was called. You all are called. The man who executes my counsel. So we're going to be executing, execute, uh, execute our, the, the counsel of God from a far country. He says, indeed, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I, will, I, I have purposed it. And I will do it. So God wants to do what he says he's going to do in our lives. Amen. And he's called all of us to be that, uh, that, that anointed person in our life. It's, uh, right here, I have in the notes. And, uh, what, what year was it when you said yes to Jesus? Okay, I don't know what year. And mine was 1981. For Pastor Angel, it was 1994. I remember when he came to uh, Heritage back in 1994. I was... I was there. Pastor uh, Chaplain Gilbert was there also. You know, we were, uh, uh, and he came in and didn't know nothing. He didn't know what was going on. <laughs> you know, God blew his mind. 
you know, and it changed his life forever. It changed his life forever. And he, and he became an ambassador for Christ, an ambassador for Christ. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to turn to uh, 2 Corinthians now. And this is all of us. You know, we all have become ambassadors for Christ. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you're a door greeter, you're greeting somebody as God's representative. Come into the house. A, a non-believer, you're greeting them. If you're, if you're in the nursery receiving a baby from a father and a mother, you're that ambassador receiving that baby from people that never have heard God, but this he got in us as an ambassador, his representative. <clears throat> and it, I'm going to read to you uh, chapter 5. I'll read it from the, from the Amplified Bible. Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ the Messiah... The Messiah means uh, the anointed one, okay? The anointed Messiah. Messiah, the anointed one. He's a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous morals and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the flesh and the new has come. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, I, I used to tell people, so listen, Christ is not Jesus' last name, okay? It means the Messiah, the anointed one. That's what uh, Messiah means. You know, that's what Christ means. And uh, so, we are in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. You know, we are in there. And let me go ahead and read on. Verse 18. But all things are from God who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself, receiving us into favor. You know, he says that uh, and this one I'm reading Four times he brings out the word favor. Receives us into favor, brought us into harmony with himself, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That's the ministry. So if you're a baby Christian, you get born again, you got ministry. You are a minister. That's who you are. You just need to know that, that, by, that by word and deed, we might aim to bring others into harmony with him. It was God personally present in Christ, reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself, not counting up and holding against men their trespasses, but counseling them and committing to us the message of reconciliation, of restoration to favor. Hallelujah. So we are Christ's ambassadors, God making his appeal as it would through us, we, as Christ's personal representatives, beg you for this, his sake to lay hold of the divine favor, the divine favor now offered to you and be reconciled to God. So, you know, this is us talking to somebody. Hey, God, you know, I'm here to tell you, you know, God wants to show you favor in your life. You just have to know it. You know, I don't know. I, I, I'm sure you all know you have favor with God. Amen. But you know what? It's more than just knowing it here. And here, you have to speak it out. You got to talk it. It says, for our sake, he made Christ virtually to be sin who knew no sin, so that in and through him, we might become endued with, revealed as being in an example of the righteousness of God, what we ought to be, approved and acceptable and in right standing relationship with him by his goodness. So, that's who, that's who we are, guys. We are God's ambassadors. And uh, let's represent. Let's represent. Amen. Let's be a, a, a good representative, of the, whether you're a nurse or, a, you know, working. Uh, like uh, Pastor uh, Angel, his assignment, and he's done it for a long time, he was uh, looking over the parking lot, walking the parking lot, making sure the cars were safe. That was his assignment for it. Two hours after or more, you know, and and uh, and if you don't got your head straight, you're gonna be mumbling and grumbling, yeah, you know. Amen. But he was out there praising God, praying in the Holy Spirit, and I believe God was showing him the end from the beginning. You know, he's seen himself ministering, 
And then he seen himself pastoring. You know, it was in the future. He's seen the end from the beginning. And you know what? You guys have, uh, this is your sixth location that you guys have been in. Six different moves. You know, but each one was, I remember the, the first uh, place, it was a small little room. And I, I ministered there for him. I was there in Buena Park. Small little place in the back of a church. And then uh, it moved on from one place to another place to another place. But, you know, every place he went to, it was, it was uh, seeing the end from the beginning. Then he got to this place. He seen the end from the beginning, from that point and that point. And you keep on seeing the end from the beginning, how God is going to bring you through and, and uh, to what he purposed in your life. Okay? What he purposed in your life. And um, so, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, and um, I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. One of my favorite verses I like preaching. It says, verse 28. So God has anointed some in the church. Uh, has anointed, has appointed. <laughs> God has appointed some in the church for his own use. First apostles. Special messengers, second prophets, inspired preachers and expounders, third teachers, then wonder workers, and those with the ability to heal the sick. The part I want to get to is helper. Helper. That's every one of us is in the ministry of help, or you should be. Okay? What do you mean? Well, if there's, and that's one thing I love. Every time I leave you, I'm getting into my car. And I see a team of you guys just laughing and moving the chairs and the tables. You know, when everybody works together, it's uh, teamwork, man. You know, I have a, a SIT. S stands for stamina. You know, us older generation, we have stamina. A lot of the youngsters, you know, that are, I believe the youngsters here in church are receiving that stamina because he sees, they see others. But people out in the world, you know, I don't want to do it. They quit, man. Youngsters quit real easy, you know. And so, they, you know, we have stamina. The I, uh, uh, the word is sit. I stands for intelligence, you know. We are smart enough to say this has to change. This, we have to make some adjustments, and we do it. Amen? And T, a T stands for team, and team is oneness. Oneness. Everybody doing it together in unity. And there's blessings there when we do it like that. Praise the Lord. So I just wanted to bring out the word help. I like to say fill the gap ministry. Whatever you see, whatever you see needs to be done. They say, you know, you say, man, I wish, pastor, I wish we could have somebody do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. You know, that's how I went from glory to glory, to glory, you know, from faith to faith, is that I would just volunteer. I'll do, I'll do that. I'll do that. And it just gave me uh, more experience, you know, more faith to believe and an anointing. You know, they, they would say, oh, man, you're, some people would say, you're just a gopher, man. <laughs> I said, yeah, but I'm an anointed gopher. <laughs> oh. I, I love doing what God wanted me to do. And, that's whatever the pastor needed, I was there. What the church needed, I was there. You know, that was all, that's what it was all about. Praise the Lord. And, you know, that anointing, you know, it says in Acts chapter 11, verse 26, it says this, that um, in Antioch, they first called them Christians. After Paul had been there for like a year, having Bible studies with him, they called them Christians. They, they call you, oh, he must be a Christian. Why? Because, man, you, they have the glory of God on you. You speak well. You talk well. You know, I mean, you do things with excellence. You know, that's one thing I want you to do, okay? Now, uh, in, in Daniel chapter uh, 6, it's not in your notes, but in Daniel chapter 6, I, I love this, verse 3. 
And I, I seen that, uh, I believe this is Fernando, what he was talking about earlier, about getting promoted. And uh, if you want to get uh, raises and promotions, it says, verse 3, then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satrap. He distinguished himself. How did he do that? How did he do that? Because an excellent spirit was in him. Amen. You know, what he done, he done it with excellence. He didn't try to, uh, you know, to do more than what he, he just done what he was supposed to do, but he done it with excellence. And when people see that, your boss sees that, he said, man, this guy's excellent. You know what? Let's give him the next position. Let's give him a raise. You know, because you have that spirit of excellence, you distinguish yourself. You don't have to be uh, brown nosing anybody to get a promotion. No, right. just do your work, man. Right. Do it well, you know, with excellence, and people are going to notice, and you're going to get promoted. Amen. You're going to get promoted like that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and now I am going to go to. If you declare the end from the beginning, it says right here, I have in the notes, great is, is, great is to dream, okay? And I, I'm thinking about Pastor Angel. And when he was in the parking lot, he was saying, wow, ah, I see myself doing more. And, you know, and I remember how, uh, after, you know, a few years, he went and talked to the pastor. He says, I feel a, a, a calling a, a, to be an a, a pastor, and I don't know all the details what went on in the office, but I knew it was in his heart. And you know what? One day he stepped out and he, he started pastoring. He says, declaring the, the end from the beginning. So he started declaring the end. I, I see myself as a pastor. I'm declaring it right now in the parking lot. Hallelujah. And there would, you know, and then it goes on right here in my notes. It says, great is to dream. When you stand in your youth. So he was a young man in the parking lot. And then it goes on to say, but a greater thing is to fight life through and to say at the end, the dream is true. The dream is true. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It says, but a greater thing is to fight life through and to say at, at the end, the dream is true. So, you know, uh, I believe Pastor Angel could say, you know what? The dream has been true to me. Look at me where I'm at now. God has blessed us with this building, Amen. you know. And, 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 you know, this is a wonderful uh, gift that God has given to all of you guys. You know, this is God's church, and uh, Pastor Angel is just the pastor, and he's doing God's Amen. will. You know, I told uh, Pastor Gil, I mean, Pastor uh, Angel this, uh, in the very bottom of verse 9, number 9 right here, in Micah 6, 8, it says this. And I said, this is why God has, uh, has promoted you time and time and time again. He has shown you, O oh man, what is good and what the, the Lord requires of you, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And because that's you, God has promoted you from one place to another place. And God wants to promote every one of us, one place or another place. You have a good example of Pastor uh, Angel, and you have one another, man. You guys are, you know, when you guys are out here praising God and all that, you, you know, you guys are lovers of God. You guys are lovers of God, it, you know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, I, right here, number four. Expect favor of God. Expect the favor of God. Okay? So, we, ha you know, do you expect favor? Okay? Do declare that you walk in the fog. I, 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 you know, people say, how are you doing? I said, yeah, I'm walking in the fog. I said, which means the favor of God. I walk in the fog every day, every day of my life. When I go do, if you're uh, at work, I have favor with my customers. I have favor with my bosses. I have favor with my manager. I have favor with my manager at the apartment so that I live in. I have favor with everybody. And declare it. I have favor. 
and, and, and uh, watch God open up the doors. You know, uh, uh, years ago, when I first got saved, got favor from a, a realtor. We went in there, talked about this beautiful home, man, three-bedroom home. It was big and beautiful, but it was out of our range. They needed $1,500 uh, $1, down, you know, uh, security, and it was so much a month. And we said, well, you know, we can't afford it. But I just told the man, I'll tell you one thing. You would never have to worry about a party in your property because we're Christians and we'll have Bible studies. And we walked out and he called us a, a week later. He says, yeah, I can't get you guys out of my mind. You know, so we came back and he says, you're gonna, you can have it without the $1,500. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to knock off $50 off your rent if you just put the trash bin out in the, in the uh, driveway. And then for the first three months, just pay me $450. We signed it. And, and then he says, pray for me, man. I'm a backslider. You know. But so, you know, but uh, I say that is to tell you this. Let people know somehow that you're a believer. You know, just say, praise God, thank you, Lord. You know, or just, you know, God, you know whatever, just your, your words that you say, you know, the right words. You don't have to say God this and God that, but they can tell that, you know, there's something about you. You know, the car, uh, I, I bought a car when I was going to the jails. I was with another pastor. And I said, hey, stop over here at the Salvation Army. I want to go look at the cars. Now, I had $3,000, and uh, we pull in, and I looked at this car, and it said uh, $3,200, you know, and I asked the guy about that, and he says, well, he says, this one's in better condition, same price, and so I took that one. But uh, I told him, well, you know, I don't got $3,000. I mean, I only have $3,000. He says, uh, let me go talk to my boss. Then he came back and he said, uh, uh, you can have it for $2,600, you know. And but before he, he done that, he says, you know what? I know you. He said, I met you before. You've ministered to me in the jails. The salesman saw me this. So, you know, and then uh, he came back and uh, with the registration, he says, you know, these people haven't paid their uh, registration fee for the last eight years. They owed 600 and something dollars. <laughs> I said, well, that takes us out of the ballpark, you know. And uh, so he went back to his body. They dropped it down to $2,200 that I paid for the car. The 600 made it like $2,800. So I still had enough money. And uh, so I went to a DNB to get the paper transfer. And the lady said, how can I have it? So I'm believing I can find favor with you. I gave her the paperwork. I said, they, they owe this much on, the, on registration. And I said, well, we can't change that. I said, okay, okay. And, and, and I did 600 then uh, I, I'm telling her, oh, you know, do uh, you go to church? She goes, yeah. I said, well, so do I. You know, I go to the jail. That's why I need this car. And she says, she says, I got some bad news for you. They owe 900 and something dollars. on. I said, well, that thing is out of my ballpark. So, you know, and she, and she, boo -boo -boo, she says, well, how about six hundred and one dollars? You know, originally it was six hundred and fifty. She knocked it from nine hundred to six hundred and one dollars. I said that works for me, sister. And I we prayed and, and I blessed her, and I drove off with my car. But that was all favor. <laughs> you know, that was all favor from God. And uh, so, you know. Uh, I want to go to uh, Proverbs chapter 3 here. It says this, beginning in verse 1. My sons, do not forget my law, and let not your heart and let your heart keep my commandments. So let's, let us be a doer of the word. Amen? Amen. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. 
and so find and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. So you do number one, two, and three. If that's you, you get four. Okay, you get favor with God and with man. It didn't, the, he doesn't have to be a believer. You know, they just want to give you favor. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And on verse 4, I wrote down on that verse, but I cited, I put F-O-G, fog, because I, it, it, it tells me I, I'm walking in the fog. Amen. And you need to remember that. Every day, you know, thank you, Lord, for favor. Thank you, Lord, Father. I walk in the fog. I have favor with anybody. Whatever you're going to do, declare favor. Hallelujah. And trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Hallelujah. I like the part that says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. I praise God all the time. And I acknowledge him all the time in my ways. You know, and uh, from the rising of the sun to going down, I, I, I thank God for my breakfast, the angels of God with me as I travel, at work. Whatever you're doing, I just acknowledge him. And praise him for all that throughout the day. And then when I'm going to go to bed, Father, I thank you, Lord, for a good day. And thank you, Lord, for a good night rest in Jesus' name. You know, that, I call that supernatural living. Amen. Okay? Because uh, you're in the supernatural all day long. And uh, I, I've said that to the sheriff department, the, the, behind the, in the sheriff when I go to the jails. I've said it at the bank. I've said it at the restaurants. They say, how you doing? I said, supernatural. And the waitress just stops and says, what? <laughs> I said, supernatural, man. And, you know, it's because of Jesus in my life. Yes. You know, and, it, you know, I use that. Hallelujah. And, uh, and uh, let's go to Job chapter 22 here. This is not on your notes, but I'm throwing this in there. And I'm just going to go direct. I left to read, uh, read from verse 21 on your own all the way down to the end. But verse 28, it says this. From the Amplified Bible, it says this. You shall also decide and decree a thing. So, you know, once you make a decision, start decreeing it. Start declaring it. Amen? Start declaring it. And it shall be established for you. And the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. You may have like five different things going on, but the light of God's favor is going to shine in all your ways. Why? Because you declare it. You speak it out. So just don't say, oh, I have favor. And yes, I know I have favor. But no, you got to speak it out. I have favor in this situation. I have favor in this and that. Amen. Praise God. And I'd just like to read uh, verse 30. I love it. He says, he will even deliver the one whom you intercede who is not innocent. Yes, he will deliver them through the cleanliness of your hands. So that's good. And you knowing that because we're clean, God is going to bring a deliverance over here to our family. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Build this. So, you know, I just want to say, Encourage yourself. You know, and, and we know that uh, in First Samuel that uh, in, in uh, First Samuel chapter thirty that uh, David encouraged himself. Amen. Remember that that story where he came back to Ziglag and the whole village was burned down and all, everybody, was, all the families were taken away, and uh, you know nobody was harmed, but it was destroyed. It, you know. And when I, th when I was reading that, I think about looking at Ukraine and how devastated everything, and there's nothing standing. That, that's heartbreaking, man. And that's what they walked into when they got back home. Everything was down, burned down, you know. But um, right here in, in Samuel, I'm just going to read verses uh, 6. Six right here. It said, and David, uh, and David was greatly dis 
distress for the men spoke of but stoning him because the souls of them all were bitterly grieved, each man for his sons and his daughters. But David encouraged himself and strengthened himself in the Lord. Okay, how did he do that? It says that in verse 8, he said he inquired of the Lord. So when he was discouraged, you know, and he wept, he was part of the, part of the weeping, but then he turned to the God and inquired of the Lord. He started talking to God. That's how you encourage yourself. Amen. Start talking to God. It says, and David inquired of, of the Lord, saying, shall I pursue the, this troops? Shall I overtake them? He's talking to God. The Lord answered him, pursue for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. So that's what we do. If we, we are feeling uh, uh, discouraged, well, encourage yourself by speaking to God. Amen. Not to, uh, if you're going to speak to a brother, you better be at another level where he's going to encourage you. Amen. You know, don't speak to somebody down here because he's not going to have the words for you. You know, speak to somebody that's going to give you an encouraging word. Hey, God. But God, but God, you always bring God into the picture. Hallelujah. And, uh, and we know that in, in uh, 2 Timothy 1.6, Paul tells us to stir up the gift. We kindle that flame, you know, in us. So we, that's our responsibility, to keep ourselves alive and well by encouraging ourselves in the Lord. And... Um, I'm almost coming to the end, guys. And, uh, and, and 1 Kings chapter 19. Okay, 1 Kings chapter 19. <clears throat> and I'm going to begin here in uh, verse 11. And he said, go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great strong wind Rent, rent the, the mountains and broke it in pieces, the rocks before the Lord, before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And afterwards, the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of a gentle stillness and a still small voice. Let's recognize that voice within us. Then it, and then Elijah heard the voice. He heard the voice. And we hear the voice of God. Amen. We hear, if, if we, if we still ourselves, God will speak to us. And he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing? You know, God said, what are you doing here, man? Why are you having this pity party? What are you doing here? You know? And, and this is, and because in verse 14, he said this earlier, uh, uh, and, and in one of the other verses, uh, he said this. This is repeating this, the pity party part of it. He said, I have been very zealous of the Lord God of hosts because the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, throw down your altars, and slay your prophets with a sword. And I, I only am left, and they seek my life to destroy it. And the Lord said to him, go, return to your ways in the wilderness of Damascus. I have in my, in my notes here, I, I just said, get back on track, man. Get back on track. We need to do that. Sometimes we get off track, we have to get back on track. Amen? He says, return on the way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. And anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, to be king over Israel. And anoint Elijah, Elisha, son of Shaphat, okay, to be the prophet in, in your place. So, you know, he gets instructions, but God told him, hey, get back on the way, man. Get back on the way that you were supposed to be. Get back on track. And some of us have to get back on track, you know, and, 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 uh, I remember, you know, I was in a, in a, in a rest home or convalescent home for seven months. And Brother Gilbert used to come and he would kind of snap out of it. <laughs> he, used to, he told me, speak louder, brother, speak louder. You know, because he said my voice was kind of soft, you know. Uh, he said, speak with strength. And you know what? I, 
boom, okay, I got that, you know. But he, uh, he, he would come and play his songs. Uh, he'd bring his guitar, we'd sing out on the patio. And then one time I asked the, the director of the um, activity, I said, hey, can we play some songs here? And he came in with his guitar, and we started sharing the word inside uh, uh, at that convalescent home. And they put me on calendar. Every, every Tuesday, I was on calendar for an hour and a half. I had an hour and a half to minister. And I'd bring my iPod and play a lot of music and preach the word to them. And you know what? That really revived me. It brought me back, man. Get back on the right track, Amen. you know? Ray said, Ray, actually, I prayed, and I said, I didn't know what he wanted to do. I said, well, Lord, I don't know if he wants to stay or he wants to go. And I asked him, do you want to, Ray, I know you don't know how to pray, but do you want to live? Do you want to stay? Or do you want to go? Do you want to stay? And that's when I said, we touch God. We start. And he did. He took it from right. He just, he got closer. And then, and he, he uh, really, we didn't know him. Amen, amen. And, and I got on calendar. I was on the board every month for all these people. And you know what? Uh, one of my, uh, the thing, I would, everybody from 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years old. And I said, listen, I said, uh, we're all old here. <laughs> I said, you know what? And when I want to preach to you, you need to be heaven ready. And I, and when I mean by that, you got to be born again. You got to receive, and I was preached off that. And then I was Preach about the love, forgiveness, so that they can have all that. But uh, they got it, brother. I was there. I, I went there for two years. Even after I got out, I was still going there. And I would say, uh, Bertha, are you afraid to die? She says, no, I'm heaven ready, man. And I tell all my family. I tell all my family about that, you know. So, you know, they're heaven ready, man. Hallelujah. So uh, uh, going back to this story here. I just want to pick it up at the very end. It says, uh, in verse 19, So Elijah left there and found Elisha, the son of Shadhat, who was being done with the 12 yokes of oxen, and, and he drove the 12. Elijah crossed over to him and cast his mantle upon him. Casting his mantle. You know, I just want you to know, that was a mantle of promotion. It got thrown on him, okay? And I just want you to know, if your pastor calls you up for prayer, receive it as a mantle of promotion. Wow. Listen to the Spirit of God. You know, listen, say yes to God, you know, and receive the Word of God and the Spirit of God and let God direct your life. But receive it as promotion. God wants me to be someone, you know, get more, be promoted. So we know that the, uh, Elijah, you know, Orlando, he went, after Elisha and, uh, and Elijah, he landed up uh, cook, having a barbecue, you know, getting rid of all uh, his equipment so he wouldn't go back, you know, and uh, he left his parents. And he ministered as a minister to uh, Elijah, Elijah for about six, seven years. He was his minister, and he'd done whatever he needed. And that's the ministry of helps. You know, he, he was there to serve him, amen? And that's what we do. Uh, we serve one another. We serve our pastors. We serve, you know, uh, people, man. The most happiest people in the world are people that serve other people, whether they're the homeless or wh whoever they may be. You know, giving of yourself to them, giving God to them. I already said that. Well, let's go to uh, here to uh, 2 Corinthians. This is good right here. I need to share this part right here. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm going to go to verse 13. And it reads like this. And since we having the same spirit of faith according 
to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. This is Paul talking here. Okay, he says, we having the same spirit of faith according to what is written. It was written in Psalms 116 about what he just quoted right there in verse 10. But it says, since we having the same spirit of faith according to as it is written. So we have that same spirit according to as it is written in the word. Amen. We have that same spirit. He says, we having, we having the same spirit of faith according to what is written. Okay, what is written. I believe and therefore I spoke. And we also believe and therefore speak. So we have to be speaking. You don't have to turn to but in, in Romans chapter 10, verse 8, it says this. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. The word of God is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. So you got to speak it out. Amen? you got to speak it forth. And, I'm, and right here, going back to chapter 4 of Corinthians, uh, it, it, I'm going to pick it up here in verse 8. I want you to see the spirit of faith in action right here. It says, Paul says, we are pressed on every side. So this, we have a lot of circumstances happening in our daily lives. Amen? We are pressed on every side, yet not crushed. That's the spirit of faith. Yet not crushed. We are per perplexed. Seeing what's going on here? But the spirit of faith says, but not in despair. Persecuted. Spirit of faith, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. That's the spirit of faith coming back. You know, things don't, but you speak the, the word of God as it is written. That's very important for us to speak the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. As it is written. So it's written there. We just have to find the words. Hallelujah. And uh, Psalm 71 Psalms chapter 71. Okay. Verses four, 14 through 18. It says this. But I will hope. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and your salvation all the days. Amen? For I do not know the, their limits. You know, I don't know the limits of how much God has blessed me. I get blessed every day since before. I've been saved now 41 years. I, I, I don't know the limits of it. It's, <laughs> I can't count them. It says, I will go to the strength of, of the Lord's God I will go in the strength of the Lord, Lord God, and I will make mention of your righteousness, of yours only. God, you have taught me from my youth, and to this day I declare your wondrous works. And now when I am old and gray-headed, oh God, do not forsake me until I declare, until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to everyone who comes. Hallelujah. So I may be gray-haired, but I'm not done yet. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And in and, 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 and chapter 78 of Psalms, let me read it to you. It says, beginning in verse 1, it says, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in in parables, I will utter dark scenes of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, telling it, uh, telling to the to the generations to come, the praises of the Lord. Amen. We're going to continue to the next generation and His strength and His wonderful works that He has done. So we're always talking about what God has done in our lives. Share your testimony. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commands our fathers, that they should make them known to their children 
and to the generations to come might know that they might know them. The children who would be born and they who may arise and declare it to their children and that they may set their hopes in God. Amen. Set their hopes in God and forget not the works of God but keep his commandments and make not uh, and may not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not set their hearts aright and whose spirit was not faithful to God. So God wants us to be faithful to share the good news to the next generation. I, you know, I, I, I choose uh, Thanksgiving as a perfect day. Uh, and, uh, you know, I say, you know what, I want to thank God that I'm not the same anymore since I walked through heaven's door. You know, this all started with my grandmother and my grandfather back in the 1930s. They were Catholics, but, you know, God changed my grandfather's life and saved his marriage, and it came down to the next generation, to the next, and, and uh, I, I went sideways for a while, but you know what, I came back to, to the God of my grandparents, you know. And then in verse 41 of the same chapter says this, verse 41 and 43, it says, Yes, again and again they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power the day when he redeemed them from the enemy, and we all were redeemed from the enemy. Amen. Then we worked, and he worked his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the fields of Zoan. So you know what? It says they limited the Holy One of Israel. Let's not limit God in our lives. Let, let us not do that. Okay? Let us not do that. And uh, just one more scripture, guys. I, I could hear your stomachs. <laughs> Amen. This is right here. Train up a child in the way he should go, okay? I know you heard this before. It says in Amplified, train up a child in the way he should go and in keeping with his individual gift or bent, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So you know what? We train them up in the things of God, and and you see their their gifts. You know where they're they might be good in uh, in uh, mu music. So lean towards them, bend that way to help them. And if they change in their course later on, you change with them. You know. Uh, a minister to your children, okay? And, um, and it says, and when he is old, he will not depart. So we train them up in the Lord. We, we take care of them during the middle years and the kids, and then they come to like me. I, you know, I, I, when I, I, I slipped into darkness. I was raised up in church until 12 years old. Then I slipped into darkness and I came back to the God of my grandparents at 29 years old, okay? And I've been saved since then. But uh, the thing is, we train them up, but when they get old, what happens in the middle sometimes, you know, it's not good, but they'll come back, amen? amen. We, we all messed up somewhere, <laughs> you know? And uh, so, and, and let me just go to Ephesians real quick here. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, and it says this. Fathers, do not irritate and provoke your children to anger. Do not exasperate them with resentment, but rear them tenderly in the training and the discipline and the counsel and the admonition of the Lord. So let's just love your children, train them up, bring them to church, you know, use the word of God, but let's not, uh, you know, provoke them. You know, you, you know, that's when you provoke them, you're most likely in the flesh. And you know, we we all need to grow up. We, we all grow up from, uh, you know, from being a carnal Christian into a mature Christian. You know, there's that those stages, but uh, it doesn't have to be that way, really. You you can jump right up and be, you know, and and do the right thing right away. Don't, don't let uh, uh, you being a baby Christian be an excuse, you know. And in, and in closing, this is the last, 
You know what that means, right? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> okay, here's the last verse. It says, in verse 6, and he shall turn and reconcile, reconcile the hearts of the estranged fathers to the ungodly children. An estranged father, you know, you might be a good father, you're raising up in the Lord, but what happens? You get a second job or a third job, and you're not there for them no more. And they resent that, and they get bitter behind that. And, you know, there's other excuses. There's alcoholics, drugs, you know, that's the dark side of it. But in, in being where we're at, you know, you could uh, get too busy and neglect your children. And so he says, uh, and bring uh, their strength followed to the ungodly children and the hearts of the rebellious children, the, you know, to the, their fathers. He's, he wants to bring them back. A reconciliation produced by repentance of the ungodly. So I believe the ungodly children, the ungodly father are going to get it right and repent, go in the right direction and get it all right with their family. Amen? Yeah. So praise the Lord. And like I said, uh, you know, uh, let's just uh, dream big, guys. Praying bold prayers, you know. Uh, I, uh, I, I had very great favor with the city of Pico Rivera. I have favor with all the pastors. Though I was a new kid in town back in 19, uh, uh, 2016. I was a new kid in town. And uh, I got uh, in my heart, I, I told this brother, we're walking out of a pastor's meeting in the parking lot. I said, you know what? I have a desire in my heart. I think God wants to have a, 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 a meeting uh, in the park for the community, for everybody. In three, you know, we done it in three parks that first year. And the guy, <laughs> she laughed at me. She said, you know what, that, that, uh, uh, that'll take a miracle, man. And I said, you know what, I believe in miracles. So in, in 2017, it was, my church was doing the host at the breakfast. So I, I made a, uh, you know, a proposal and I shared it with them. And, and 17 pastors were there and they all just looked at me and going, where is this guy coming from, you know? Only two out of the 17 were with me because they're outreach, you know. And uh, so anyways, it took me a whole year to get those guys behind the vision. But I, it started off, I, I had it in my heart, and I pursued it every month. I would bring it up at every meeting that we had, and they would just listen to me like, but I, I started going to the, the meetings in the city, and I met the commissioner who introduced me to the mayor. He loved me. We got me together, and everybody in the whole city opened up the door. I had no problems doing whatever I wanted because the mayor was behind me, the commissioner was behind me, the councilman, everybody. They gave money to it, and everything worked out, and we'd done it for three years until the COVID. They would finance us and open up doors for us, you know, the different uh, uh, mayors that came in and out. And it, w it was very successful. But it was because I had favor with God. Okay. And, 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 and dream big and, and, and praying bold prayers. I was, go I was going to uh, Walmart saying, okay, what am I going to ask him for? Paper plates and stuff like that. And thinking of what I, you know, I'm going to ask him to get involved. And I heard a big voice in me say, go big. And I just stopped and shut everything down in my mind. Go big. So when I walked in, in one minute, I met the manager. He said, what can I help you for? I said, well, we're doing this event for the city. I have a letter from the, uh, the mayor here. And uh, I said, I want to know if you can give us 12 bikes to give out to the children. He said, yeah, sure. In one minute, it was that quick. Favor. Fido Lay gave us 1,500 uh, bags of chips. Coca-Cola would, you know, one, they, they gave me, uh, oh, man, I forget, how many pallets of uh, sodas? And, you know, and uh, so everybody opened up, God opened up the doors. 
And what I'm saying to you is uh, pray, you know, bold prayers, okay, and, and, and declare it. You know, you might think that that's impossible, but nothing's impossible with God. You just don't faint in the process. I mean, I had a lot of stuff not happening that first year, but it did not budge me one bit. I just kept on doing what I knew I was supposed to do until what happened at, at this meeting. I was at a pastor's meeting, and a friend of mine was sitting at another table. He says, hey, Ray, man, the pastors are talking about you, man. They said, if the city and the mayor is behind you, they, we got to get behind uh, this event with Ray. And I just said, hallelujah, <laughs> you know, because it came to pass. I don't care how it happened. But they, they all got involved. And then the good thing about it is we had a meeting up in the mountains of 10 pastors, and they all thanked me afterwards. We were behind them. They said, thank you for not throwing in the towel. Our church had a great time. People had an exciting time. Never done it before, the community outreach like that. You know, and, uh, but it was pressing on and not throwing in the towel in God's favor. And that's what I want you guys to know that uh, since we met Jesus, there's no stopping us. Amen? Amen. I want you to listen to this song right here. Okay? Listen to the words. Because uh, in the song it says, uh, in the will, uh, I will speak to the, will, uh, to the desert place. You know, you speak to that desert place. Whatever is dry and, and in the wilderness, speak to it. And, and uh, you'll keep on moving on with God behind you. Go ahead, brother. Listen to this song. It's called Moving On. Hallelujah. Something I declare all the time. You got to put it up. A little louder. Jesus, there's no stopping me yet. Cause I'm moving on. Just 
Hallelujah, Father. I thank you, Father. And I praise you, Father, that we are not looking back, but we're moving, looking forward, Father. I thank you, Lord, for the anointing upon every man here, Father. I thank you, Father, for favor with you and favor with man, Father. I thank you, Lord, Father, that you know our hearts and, Father, you know our desires and our dreams, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you work with each and every one of us, Father. I thank you, Lord, that we are ministers of the gospel, Father out in the streets, at home, in the church, Father. We fill the gap here in church and with the house ministry, Father. I thank you, Lord, Father. You bless every man here, Father. Whatever they need, Father, you supply their needs, Father, in Jesus' name, Father. And I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord, for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. For any man that wants to be filled with the Holy Spirit, he can receive it. All he has to do is ask for it, Father. And I thank and I praise you, Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I want to just shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Let's shout again one more time. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Anybody want uh, any special prayer? Do you come and see me and let's uh, go chow down? Praise the Lord. And I thank God for our food that is nourishing and strength for our bodies. Amen. As his word is for our spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, hello. All right, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming out. Uh, as we fed this, uh, the spirit man, now it's time to feed the body, the beautiful temple God's given us. Amen. Thank you, uh, Chaplain Ray. Can we give him a round of applause again, please? For the glory of God. And you guys are dismissed. Amen. Welcome and join us to eat. Break some bread. Amen. <laughs>